There are many good Catholics. They get themselves involved in church, in activities, in church organizations, thinking that if they serve the Lord, everything will be smoothed. Everybody will appreciate them. In truth, my dear brothers and sisters, those of us who are serving the Lord, whether as volunteers or in full-time ministry, it is really a cross, a sacrifice. Because very often we are misunderstood. Very often we are wrongly accused. And very often we meet all kinds of oppositions. But should we be surprised? We should not be. Because the gospel that we proclaim will always be a threat to the world. Although the gospel we proclaim is truly good news, good news for the family, good news for those who are keen in true love, good news for those of us who want to promote authentic freedom, good news for those of us who believe in the culture of life. Of course, those who want to promote promiscuous love, that's bad news. Those of us who want to promote bondages to all kinds of addiction, this is bad news. Otherwise, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should welcome the good news. Don't be surprised that if our master has been wrongly accused, even though he was doing good, he faced a lot of oppositions. For us as Christians, we must be ready to assume the cross. Be ready for suffering because we are true to our faith. But my dear brothers and sisters, it is also true. We are all afraid of suffering. We are afraid of martyrdom. No one runs to the cross. As far as possible, we want to run away from the cross. Who is not afraid of death? Who is not afraid of pain? Who is not afraid of rejection? We all are afraid. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, how can we overcome our fear of living an authentic Christian life? We can stand firm in our faith, first and foremost provided we are confident that truth will prevail, that God's love will overcome hatred at the end of the day. Yes, the world can try to hide the truth, but the truth will be revealed. No one can hide the truth. No amount of hatred can destroy love. Indeed, thousands, millions of Christians have died for their faith, have died for love, have died for the truth. That is why all the persecutions in the church, the purification that we are going through, will make the church stronger, not weaker. So don't think when we are suffering persecutions from without or even from within, we should be afraid. Those are means the Lord will use to strengthen our faith. But we must be confident that the truth will prevail at the end. That is why we continue to work even when we cannot see what is ahead of us. Secondly, we overcome our fear when we are convicted of what we believed in. The reason why many of us are fearful to proclaim the word, to witness to our faith, it is because we lack conviction of what we believed in. Indeed, the secret of every teacher Every preacher, every witness of the gospel is whether he is convicted of the truth about Jesus, the truth about the word of God. There is no substitute for a personal prayer life. A preacher cannot preach with conviction, with power, unless he has first interiorized the word has made the word his own. If they say something, some kind of celebrate knowledge, it will not change your life. A very personal encounter with the word. 
Conviction. What kind of conviction do you have? If it's not personal conviction, it's a conviction based on some knowledge on the faith of others, it will not stand. We must fear God. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we have all kinds of fear. We fear the devil. We fear man. We fear suffering. But do you fear God? All other fears will be subsumed by a greater fear. So we'll be frightened of the devil. We'll be frightened of suffering. It's because we lack fear of God. If we know that God is greater, more powerful, then our fear of God will conquer all the other fears. It is so true in life. I'm sure all of us have our fears, but when the opportunity comes, when the moment comes, when we have to assume responsibility, a decision, you will do anything beyond our imagination because of a greater fear ahead of us. That's why those people who do not fear God, who think that God does not exist, of course, they fear men. They fear suffering. Those of us who fear God will overcome this fear. Especially the fear of losing Jesus. Do you fear losing Jesus? If you fear losing Jesus, then you'll do everything to protect your faith. I'm sure you fear losing your spouse. You fear losing your children. You do everything to protect your family. But you don't fear God. You don't fear losing Jesus. That is why we give in to temptations. We give in to our sinfulness. Most of all, my dear brothers and sisters, do you fear losing your soul? This is the greatest of all fear. People can kill our body and destroy us, but people cannot destroy your soul. Your soul is immortal, eternal. And therefore, whatever decisions we make today will determine the kind of future we have tomorrow and for eternity. How long do we live? The most you live 85, 90 years old. Life is very short. And then it will be eternity. Are you living for the present only? Or do you live for eternity? If you are living for eternity, then of course, you should be afraid of losing your soul, not your body. This body will deteriorate. This body will give way when the time comes. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us trust in God. The assurance that Jesus, he said, every hair on your head is counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. Have confidence in him. Trust him. And surrender your life into his hands.